hello again. I am so excited tonight. I am bringing you my Heart Club experience over into the Scarecrow Challenge group. So, if you've been wondering what Heart Club is like, I am going to do my painting in here with you guys. So hang on just a second. Got to get my computer up so I can see who's on. Make sure that I am visible. Um, but anyways, so I'm excited to just give you a little bit of a taste of what I do every Wednesday night. Well, not every, we're doing three, three weeks a month. So I would say the first three Wednesdays, but who knows, it just kind of depends. But anyways, three, we'll do an acrylic painting three times a month, plus some other bonuses throughout the year. So sometimes I do some watercolor or some lettering or whatever. Yvonne, hi, welcome. This is your first Heart Club class. Tonight, I'm so glad you're here. Hey, Melissa. Melissa is a, um, I can't think of the word I wanna say, but she's been here since day one when I started Heart Club. So um, yeah, that pumpkin stock's gonna be fun. I'm excited to do it with you too. I was, I had pumpkins on my mind today and I put it outside on my porch. Shoot, I painted a really cute pumpkin, real pumpkins on a piece of wood today for a, uh, Sometimes in the studio, I'll do painting classes. Hi, Mary. Mary's in Heart Club, too. She's been in there since the beginning. Arabella, yes, you guys, welcome. Arabella and Yvonne are both new members to Heart Club. So, um, <clears throat> welcome, ladies. I will just have, um, wait just a couple more minutes, and I need to do my drawing for the people that signed up. This is the names of those that signed up before Mon or Sunday, Monday. So you guys get a free month. So Deanna, yes, welcome. Hey, Susan from North Carolina. You can't stay, but yeah, thank you for saying hi. You can come back, watch the, the rerun. Re, re, what is my deal with words sometimes? Rerun. But anyways, glad you said hi. So here in a couple minutes, let me see. Hi, Connie. Glad you're here. And Michelle, welcome, hello. Connie, you're gonna get to see me mixing paint just like I do for all of my classes. You're thinking about, I was thinking you were already in there. Sorry, Arabella, I wasn't trying to um, act like you were already in there. But anyways, yes, if you're gonna think about signing up, tomorrow's the last day. So, sorry, I wasn't trying to um, pressure you into doing that. I was just thinking that you did. Back from Wisconsin, you're addicted, Jamie. Good. That's the, that's the point. That's why we're all here because all of these ladies are addicted. So it's so good. It's just, tell you what, I look forward to you. I've been out in the studio painting with you guys a lot this week. And um, I painted today and was working on some things. I did a watercolor video on my actual page just showing some fun ways to mix colors and make full trees and stuff with them. So I did that today and I did do, um, I will show you. So if you're thinking about being in heart club and the ones that you are, that are, I haven't put my schedule up. I think it's in the email for the new members. Just, it says what we're doing and it's like a still life. I don't remember what it says, but anyways, so I was working on it today. So next, it's Wednesday night, so October 7th is a Welcome Heart Club painting, and it's one I did at the beginning, so it'll just kind of introduce you to it a little bit. And then the next week is your favorite fall beverage painting. It's a still life. And so this is what I came up with today, and it was so much fun, because what's cool about it is I know not everybody likes coffee, and I just came up with a little saying, this one I just thought was for, I like pumpkin a latte. Um, but anyways, I painted, actually it was the same painting and I just changed it and it had the little tea bag hang or the tea tag thing hanging out. Cause I know some people aren't coffee drinkers, but we're going to paint our favorite beverage. And it said, I don't remember what it said. I wrote on it, but I took a picture of it. So I won't forget what it said. But anyways, um, Louise first night in over a year. Yay. I'm glad that you're here. 
Um, this is so good. Somebody just was telling me thank you that they hadn't painted in a year. Was that you, Louise? Um, but anyways, and how good it was to get back into painting. You guys, it's so good for you to just take time out to be creative. I was talking about that a little bit last night and how much we need it and how we're, it's wired into us to be creative in some way. And I know even math can be creative. Um, I guess I would be creative in math. I would come up with my own creative answers. I, I mean, I can do math. I can balance my checkbook back when we had to. It's funny, it's not funny. My husband's an avid checkbook balancer. I'm thinking, you can just go on a website and just compare it there. You don't need to balance nothing, but he still does it the old school way, sort of. But remember when you used to do it on the back of the statements and you had to fill in all the stuff and make sure it all came out? Man, that drove me crazy. So anyways, math is not my favorite thing. I know we need it for some things, but beyond general math, I don't know. My daughter's trigonometry and all the, the fancy stuff beyond that. So she's amazing. She did not get it from me. So anyways, enough about that. I'm just saying we're all creative in different ways. So um, anyways. All right, I was wondering if any of my other, hi Chris, um, people from Heart Club, I was messaging them, emailed them, I sent them, or put it on the page, we'd be over here. So hopefully, because I can't let anybody in, I don't do mixed media, Michelle. Um, I love mixed media, and I... Um, I play around with a palette knife. I don't use it in classes. I'm the kind of person that probably would do anything and everything, but I just have to focus on what one thing because otherwise I'm like a dog running after a squirrel and I'm all over the place. So I do stuff like I did like summer art camps. This was actually in my studio and I did it with kids and we did mixed media, abstract painting. Um, we did palette knives. We did all that stuff. I don't normally, I have done a palette knife class in my studio, but I haven't ever done it online. So I just try to keep it to just doing brushes and acrylic is what I do. I mean, maybe down the road and even watercolor, I play around with it, but I haven't actually like taught it. I mean, I have, but not in Heart Club. I did do my first one where I had it, I recorded it because I was out of town. So they did have watercolor. I don't feel like that I'm like, done enough watercolor to say I could really teach it. I'm still learning it in some ways myself, but I love doing it. So I just am not afraid to try anything, so I'll do everything, but I just kind of keep my, what I personally teach in my heart club down to pretty narrow niche of just painting acrylic um, with a brush. So if that answers your question. Um, you're not a painter at all. Yeah, well, you might be up to this, okay. I'm going to, I'm already, my bright, my light is up on bright. Usually I don't, I'm shining. I got to turn my fan on and I'm going to flip the camera around. That light, I didn't, I usually I turn it down when I'm talking and I forgot. So it's like way bright and it's hot. Even though it's an LED light, it's still warm. And I start sweating in here. I just closed up my studio. It's such a pretty day, but I didn't want the mosquitoes coming in. Okay, this is the, the roller coaster ride part of Heart Club. It's me just trying to get my camera in a place where you can see. I think we're good. All right, so let's talk about, and it's not real straight, it's kind of angled. Hang on, a couple more whoop de doos and I'll be set here. I'm not that professional to where I have a camera crew. That would be nice though. Maybe one day. Right now it's just me and my trusty iPhone and a light ring and thank goodness I got, got good Wi-Fi out here. We're out in the country and we have a great um, neighbor that does our Wi-Fi and there's a tower and so he came and hooked me up for in the studio with my own router and everything so okay I am settled even though my video on my laptop is still moving all over the place so I'm going to talk about <clears throat> the supplies I use when I teach I know with the scarecrow challenge um 
I'm going to have a nice shadow on there. With the Scarecrow Challenge, I had you get just the little acrylic paints, and I just picked ones that, excuse me, that I um, used, you know, in the past, and that were not very expensive, because I didn't want anybody to go out and spend a lot of money on something, especially if you didn't know that if this was going to be something that you would continue to do or not. So, and we can always use a few craft paints. It's always nice to have those on hand. But anyways, um... First thing is the canvas that I use when I teach is a 12 by 16. And this is a 12 by 16, the same size I told you to get for the Scarecrow. Sometimes I'll use a 12 by 12, and that's what this one was, um, is a 12 by 12, so it's the same width, it's just a little shorter. So anyway, sometimes we'll do that, but most of, most of the time it's this size. Okay, so the two brushes. I, keep, I just use the wax-coated paper place to put my paint on. I always have paper towels handy and a thing of water. And then I only use two brushes. This is, this, I have been teaching classes in my studio and all around the Kansas City metro area for seven years. And these are the brushes that I've used in all of my classes. If any of you guys have been on um, my, oh, Sam, Melissa, oh, thank you. Hang on. Yeah, I can do it for my computer. Thank you for telling me that because I just, I know they always paint with us and I was worried because I hadn't seen them request. So let me go. I wish I would have set you up as an admin. Let's see if it shows up here. Yep, there's Shelly. There's Sammy. All right, you girls are in. Can you let them know, Melissa, that I, I'm mean, sure they'll see that. But anyways, all right. <clears throat> let me go back to... The video okay thank you for telling me that man I was like wondering about them the coloring looks really weird tonight looks kind of red let me adjust my light see if I need to on the I know nothing about lighting and um, well this looks weird on the video, but I'm going to leave it. I don't want to mess it up. Okay, so anyways, all right. So a couple other ladies from my heart club are coming over here to join. These are usually the ones that paint with me live. And then if you're not around live, you don't have to be there. It's recorded, and I send it out in an email. And, um, you know, you can watch it whenever. So anyways, we're talking about art supplies. Okay, so I use... Um, this is a Liquitex basic. It's called a bright. It's like a flat brush. It's a size eight. It's just the flat same one that I was using with the scarecrow. So that one. And then all I use is this small round size four. It's a Blix Scholastic Wonder White round brush. It's just I like the size of it for doing details. And those are the only supplies I use. Now paint. Um, let me show you the brand real quick. And all I have, I have it in a half gallon. You, you can buy them in quarts. But anyways, this is the brand, the acrylic brand of acrylic paint. And I love it. This is what I get. Hi, Shelly. I'm glad that Melissa told me that. So I'm glad you're on. I was worried because I know you guys are always here. And that's why it's like I put up that post on Heart Club. And thought, you didn't want to forget. All right, so the colors we use to paint. We have titanium white. And chrome yellow. And I use a lot of white. So usually I get a pretty decent amount of white out. Chrome yellow. My red is always a little bit more runny. I don't know what, what the deal is. And this is bright red. These are the actual names for that brand. Thalo Blue, Thalo is P-T-H-A-L-O, and Mars Black. There are different shades of black. So those are the colors that we're going to use tonight. And we are going to paint the pumpkins. See the lighting change. That is really weird. It must be my camera. I don't know. 
I am beginning to phone, not my camera, but my phone. I'm getting kind of getting concerned. I have the iPhone 11 and it's like, good grief. It seems like phones just don't last very long and then they start making, doing weird things. Okay, Michelle, you, good idea. Watch and check it out and then just see what you think. We'd love to have you. Okay, so I'm trying to make sure this is right centered here. Okay, so what we're gonna do tonight, we're gonna do, this is fun. I did not give you a template. I know I think I spoiled you guys with a scarecrow challenge right out the gate by doing a template. I do not usually do templates for any of my paintings. I did with my watercolor one um, because that's something I think for, especially people starting out, it's probably a good thing to have. But anyways, for these, most generally I don't do templates, but I will definitely hold your hand, walk you through stuff and try to help you to not be so afraid of it being wrong because that's the most important thing. So, and pumpkins, if any of you go to a pumpkin patch, <laughs> sorry, you're slackers. You're not slackers. I, You know what? There's a few times I've screwed up on some things in Heart Club, so it's okay. I have tons of grace for you, just like you have all the grace for me when things were always exactly what they should be. So, Glad you guys are here. Sammy and Shelly are mother and daughter and they get together, they make it, it's their Wednesday night um, to get together and paint together every single week. And so it's so cool. So I love it how it brings people together. Okay, so templates, we're not doing that. But I want you to just let go of things, thinking things need to be a certain way because they don't. So if you go to the grocery store, I know there's a store um, that I shop at and all the pumpkins are setting outside and um, oh you got rain coming tonight yay I don't have any tonight but anyways there's the pumpkins I want to say they're the Cinderella pumpkins that they're the real flat squishy one I mean they're not squishy but they're flatter and wider and so that's the kind of stack I'm gonna do the one that, that I showed you in the video was a longer canvas and it was also different paint. I was just playing around. So this is gonna be experiencing mixing colors and all that and having fun with it. So we're gonna start with our little brush and we're gonna just do black paint. And we're gonna draw. We're gonna start out by drawing. Now, acrylic paint can be covered up and you guys can fix anything. And I've told that for years and years to everybody I've painted with in person. And I've helped people fix so many things. We can cover up things. So if you have something that doesn't feel right or doesn't look right and it just really bugs you, um, I can tell you exactly the best way to fix it without seeing it. I just kind of know the process. But also, if it's you just think in your mind it's not good enough, allow yourself to finish the painting and then you can look at it because that's what makes a difference. Sometimes we just have a certain idea what we want and, it's, and we think it's not good enough and it really is. Okay, so, too much talking tonight, goodness sakes. <clears throat> so I wanna picture my canvas in thirds, okay? So if I just lay my hand in each section of a third, so I know that I want three pumpkins, and so I'm gonna just make a little line, just, I don't have it right up against my hand, but I know that's a, that's a third. I'm gonna just go a little above this one, whoops, and I just painted right across my fingernails. I am always painted. And then let's do, this one I'm gonna squish down a little bit because I want room for a little bit of a stem. So I want at least a little bit, a couple inches at the top. And I may be able to push these down a little bit more. Might be, <clears throat> we'll see, that could be the top of the stem. So when we paint pumpkins, don't paint perfect, you guys. This is where you get to let go of perfection. Okay, so we're gonna start with one shape in the middle and we're gonna start with a, and I'm gonna purposely not make my line straight. Now, just like I showed you in the scarecrow, you guys, these are big, thick lines. They don't have to be really thin, perfect outline lines, okay? And sometimes I can, I even will sketch and move them around a little bit with black paint, which black paint is bold and yes, it is harder to cover up, but it can be done. So I have this big old um, oval shape like a huge avocado. 
Oh, a 15 by 30. That'll be fun. Yes, Melissa, yeah. So just think bigger. So 30 inches. So you want maybe, maybe your first pumpkin could be 10 inches high. Then the next pumpkin may be 8 inches high. And then you can see how big the last one needs to be. So yeah, that would be awesome. Okay, so there's our big, huge avocado. So now on each side, I'm just gonna add, see how I'm just curving off the side of it. And I'm just adding, and if these, if you guys really looked at these Cinderella pumpkins ever, you can see that they're not the really perfectly, it's not like you're digging through the whole um, pumpkin patch looking for the perfect jack-o-lantern jack, jack pumpkin to carve. These are just the ones that are just kind of knobby and the, not the ones with the little warts all over them. I've seen those too. But anyways, we're going to go on both sides. It's almost like a big elephant head with two big elephant ears. You can, Michelle, draw, but I'm going to tell you, you can totally do that, but sometimes we get, get hung up on that a little bit. And if you can, are you actually painting at night? Or are you watching? Um, because I want to just show you that even, even this, if you don't like it, can be fixed without doing a pencil. Because like I said, with acrylic paint, you can paint over and you can fix anything. So I'm doing one more on each side. Elephants are your favorite animals. They are amazing. All right, so there's my one big, huge pumpkin for the first one of my stack, okay? Okay, so now I wanna put another one on. And so I'm just gonna do the same thing, although this one, I don't need to, well, let's just, let's just make another avocado shape, okay? And I just want you to kind of embrace the wonky lines, kind of, I do want you to, because these type of pumpkins are not all perfectly shaped pumpkins. I didn't quite go up to that line. So that's something that'll get, okay, yeah, Michelle, then just watch um, and see kind of what you learn from that. And then, but normally we don't need a pencil because we can erase paint. So, you'll be good. All right. All right, so I'm just, and there's little sections in here that there's nothing that's like, it wouldn't be just open air, but it'll be shadows in there, but it's just not quite going all the way down to this one. You don't see the stem of the pumpkin because if you've ever stacked pumpkins in real, you can't really do it if there's stems on them. So you gotta either take the stem off or get one without. Otherwise they won't stack. All right, and there's pumpkin number two. All right, here is pumpkin number four three and I'm not going to go all the way up. So I have that line that I didn't bring this one up. I don't want to quite go up to that because I do want a little bit of space at the top. And each pumpkin's getting a little bit smaller. You know what? And if they're not all getting smaller and they're the same size, it's okay too. Because sometimes when we get pumpkins, they may all be close to the same size and you just stack what you got. So it doesn't have to necessarily go smaller. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and just add a stem on the top. And I like to make it look like it actually came off the vine by making it a little wavy. Gone are the days when we make a round circle for our pumpkin. And I'm going to go ahead and paint it black too, but we'll add color to it later. But gone are the days. See, that now there's that little black spot I'll cover up and I'll be able to cover that up. If I could complete my sentence, gone are the days when we used to draw circles for our pumpkins and a square on top for the stem. We're not going to do that. All right, so now we just need 
a minute for this black to dry because sometimes um, my brush will leave thicker areas which to speed it up I can just spread it out because if I have wet black paint and I'm trying to paint my pumpkins then it would pull that black into it which depending on what colors you use I think it'll be fine at the top it'll be dry so main one is just down here because we're going to start at the bottom so I'm just kind of spreading it out where I see that the paint's kind of wet I'm just spreading it out a little bit actually we're not going to start at the bottom we're going to start with all of the background so <clears throat> Once you get this drawn, and I hope you're not getting too worried about it being perfect. I know my heart clubbers kind of know the pace that I do, and I don't hang around for too long. Um, I'll give you a couple more minutes to finish your outline. I'll adjust this, maybe try to get it a little bit better in the view of the camera. So I can see that it's off the edge. Um, but anyways, I try to keep moving so we're not t too long. We typically can go hour and a half to two hours. When I first started, there was a few paintings that we were doing over two and I felt like that was just too long. I was losing people that were painting because it was just too late, especially for a work night and stuff. And so anyway, so I've been trying to keep moving and then I just encourage you, if you don't get it all done while we're painting live, then once I get off, then you can go back to the parts that you feel like you still need to work on. So that way I'm not holding up people too much and we can go on with our evening, but those that wanna hang out and paint can continue to do so. All right, I need to go just a tad more. Okay, you guys good? Okay, so now we're gonna take flat brush. And I did on, and I'm gonna do similar colors that I did on the one that I showed you, that abstract one. So that way you can kind of get a fill of different colors. It was just fun, it was colorful. So the first thing I'm going to do is all this background and I wanna show you the colors I do. Um, and I do not do a lot of mixing. You won't, I don't like just take Okay, say I wanna make a aqua color, an aqua or blue green or turquoise or whatever are made from blue, yellow, and white. I don't just sit there and mix all of those together, but I will show you just a little bit to get you started and then I'll show you how I do it because I like to see the different colors. So I know for aqua, I want it light, so I know I'm gonna use a lot of white. But anyways, let's start. I'm gonna pull a little bit. Yellow's the color I'm gonna use the least of so I'm gonna put some yellow and I'll pull my blue over to here. And on the plate, you'll be able to see this. You wanna make sure you get a blue green color, not a green color, cause I don't, you want a little bit more on the blue because I don't want, and can you see it? I don't want, see it when it lifts up, how pretty that is. Anyways, I don't want a green sky. Okay, so now I know I, I made that. So now I know kind of in my mind, and it's practice, you guys, over and over. So I have that on my brush. Now I'm just gonna take white because I do want it lighter. Okay, well, I'm not gonna sit here and mix it all because the more you mix on your plate, for one, it dries and you end up losing a lot of uh, paint that way. The other thing is, is you miss out on all the colors that you could be making. So when you see me paint here, that's way darker than I want, okay? So I'm gonna just wipe some of this extra paint off my brush, I just wiped it on a paper towel. And now I'm doing a lot more white. And this, it doesn't dry instantly, so I got time to use this paint here that was a little darker and just keep adding that to the white that I put on my brush. So now I'm all I'm doing is taking white paint, no more of this because I have plenty on my canvas. And I'm using my big flat brush and I will paint and paint all different directions. I flip my brush back and forth, both sides. I'm gonna grab more white because I still want it a little lighter. And anything can be covered up. If it's too dark, once that dries, you can add it lighter if you need to. But anyways, I'm gonna turn my canvas this way so I can get up around the stem. Yeah. 
So I paint right up on the edge of my black. I don't know, it's still wet up here because I didn't make sure this was dry. So I'll wait a minute, I can see wet paint. But I'll paint right on this black line so that way when, when my painting's all done, there's not really a black, much of a black outline. <coughs> Excuse me. Another place where the paint was a little wet. Okay, so I try to go random with my brush strokes. I just had a lot of paint there because I don't want to have a pattern. So I'll just flip it back and forth over and I'll have different shades. So I'll have more white and some. And what other color besides white and blue? Just a little bit of yellow, Elaine. Just barely a little bit of yellow because it just gave a little bit more of this aqua color for the sky or the background or whatever. And like I said, I'm painting right up on top of the edge of, and it's just a style I like. You know, you may decide, I like a cleaner style. I don't want it, that messy black shadow all the way around it. I like that, it's just a personal preference, but you guys will find what you like. Sometimes it takes a while to even know what you like. And so do, you know, just try it different ways with different people or different pictures that you do. And then, now I'm gonna have to make sure this is in the right place again. Okay, so let me just show you. All right, so remember I did just, I did a little bit of yellow in my blue until I got this pretty emerald blue or turquoise blue color. And then I'm just using a lot of white. And I didn't go right up to my pumpkin up there because I still have a wet spot of black. So again, I'm just flipping, like flipping my brush one side, the other. I'm using the wide width of it, not painting with the skinny direction. That would take days. Um, I'm just doing the wide width. I just cut in around, like I said, and paint right up on top of those black lines a little bit. So there's a little bit of a shadow of that blue on it. I let different shades, so many different shades of this blue show which is what's so beautiful about mixing your own colors is you get all these colors you would never get if we bought like the colors um, and use those. We miss out on so much. It's like every painting becomes a fingerprint of you because only you can make the colors the way that you make them. And it's so neat because in my studio classes and even in Heart Club when I teach, you know, we teach from the same, or we learn from the same teacher, the same instructor, and we all are referencing the same photo or um, painting. And everybody's is different. And I encourage everybody just to embrace the different. Because we don't want everybody to just paint alike. I don't want cookie cutter paintings. I don't want everybody just painting exactly the same thing with it, all the same colors, because then it's like you lose the uniqueness. As you get down towards the bottom, whoops, I lost my color there. Make them just a little bit more. I got a little bit too much blue. See how that's just a, oh, you can't see. See how much, that's just a little bit bluer right there. So I had to make some more. As you get down to the bottom, if your pumpkin's not right on the base, on the very bottom edge of your canvas, you can do just a little darker shade. So I'm doing the yellow and blue again. And get some here. And do you see how I take out from the edge of my paint puddle? That way we're not 
dabbing our brush on top of it because when you just dab your brush on top, if I were to say I wanted yellow and I had blue on my brush and I'm touching on top, the blue sticks all over top of the yellow. And what if I wanted to make purple and then I have, or you don't make purple with yellow. What if I wanted to make orange and I have blue dots all over it. So then my orange becomes brown or muddy or whatever you want to call it. So anyways, I'm going darker shade for down here. I want darker because it's kind of the bottom and a little bit of a shadow. It kind of anchors your pumpkin stack. So it's setting. It doesn't look like it's floating in the air. All right, so now I want to take a little white and just kind of soften those two or those colors. That way it just kind of softens. I overlap it a little bit so then I don't see just a, all of a sudden a big difference in color. And I will tell you, it just if you've not been one to paint and it's all new to you, just practice. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get, the better you'll get at it. So, um, especially if you've never done it, nobody just wakes up and is a, you know, just a astounding artist. It takes a lot of practice. And you gotta be okay with mistakes. If you ever watch Bob Ross, he would agree. All right, let's see if it's dry up at the top again. And so that little bitty black line that I didn't paint on, I could, I could see it a little bit, but now if I go over it again, usually it takes about two times. If you do thin paint to cover up something, so like a black line, if you do like super thin, let it dry, then cover it up again, and just do a couple, however many times it takes, two or three times, and um, letting it dry in between. So it's easy to want to rush it and try to put a whole bunch of paint on and not let it dry and it doesn't work very well and I've just, it gets frustrating. I've done it, so many other people have done it. So it's just being patient, letting it dry, keep it thin so that way it'll dry faster and you can fix it quicker. Putting a lot of wet paint on a lot of wet paint is kind of like trying to paint your fingernails with old fingernail polish and it never dries and it just makes a mess. See, oh, right, Michelle. Hi, Cynthia, welcome. Um, I understand what you're saying. You, you're afraid you're not gonna have all the um, same colors, but that's what, that's what I want people to learn is one, um, so when I do a sky, is you know, we'll paint all the way across and just grab the colors and it just automatically places clouds in your sky and it just shows different shades of color in your sky. And, and, the, and the thing is, is I want to encourage you, you is it's a painting and it's not a photo. And also as you start painting, you'll start looking outside and you'll start seeing so many more colors and things that you never noticed before. So it's okay if it's not always the exact same color. And even for me, and if you can see this, this is all different shades um, of this blue. So it's not like just solid, um, exact same color. But you know, if that's really a style that you like, where you want it to be all the same, you just, you'll get better and better at mixing your paints to match. But like if, let me show you here for an example. So I'm gonna mix some that has a little bit more of a green tint. So I'm putting a little bit more yellow in it. So it's a little more of a greenish color, okay? So can you see? It's kind of a seafoam green. Okay, so say I was trying to paint it and I was like, oh, that's not the color I want. Well, one, I could just take it and I could do that on purpose. And I could take that green and I could just put it all different places instead of just leaving it there where I was trying to fix something. This is just a, an idea, it's not like, and I know in, sometimes in our heads we're like, no, I don't like that, and it's okay. But anyways, I understand what you're saying, just trying to mix the same color, but you'll get better at it. The more you practice, the better you get. 
But anyway, so now there's some green up in the top of mine. And I put it in other places too, so it wasn't just here. So then it looks like it's on purpose. All right. And I like that. That was a good idea. Thank you, Michelle. So anyways, okay. I'm gonna make sure this is in the right spot. All right, so we're going to come down. I'm gonna give you a couple more minutes. Give you a few more minutes. You know what? While you guys are finishing up your background a little bit, I'm gonna do my drawing for the people that signed up on Sunday and Monday night that I said we'd get a free month of Heart Club. So these are for the actual people that are in Heart Club that are new, that signed up either Sunday or Monday night. And I said I was gonna give away a month of Heart Club. And I was trying to figure out how to do it with the, the payment thing to like do a coupon. I wasn't sure how to do it. It was new, I'm using a new thing for that Gumroad thing that you guys signed up through. And um, that's new. So I didn't know how to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I will just PayPal you the money back, if that's okay. So anyways, all right, I'm not gonna look in here, but I just wanted to see, can you see anybody's names? Maybe you guys can see, I can't. So anyways, I have it up way high, and I'm pulling a name out. And I have Georgina Green. So Georgina, you are the free month of Heart Club winner. And uh, thank you guys for signing up right away. So anyways, I will get a hold of Georgina, if anybody knows her. Oh, you're... Yes, I did just put Cynthia. I know, I saw that. And I have you in here. Were you one of the early ones? I don't know. But no, maybe you are. I don't know. But um, I think you are in here. Yep. I didn't draw your name, but there it is. I didn't have your last name. And I was guessing you are Martinez. Thank you. Because there was a couple Cynthia's on there, and I was pretty sure it was you. So, anyways, thank you for clarifying that. So, all right. That wasn't quite five minutes. I told you I'd give you five minutes. So, anyways, Georgina Green is who wins the free month. Who knows? I may do other drawings at different times <clears throat> for fun things. So, don't think that's your last chance. To ever win anything. I remember the first time I won something. I was in a in a direct sales company and I remember the first time my name got drawn for something. I was like, my goodness, I've never won anything. And it was just the coolest feeling. And I'm sure it wasn't anything big. But it was still fun to just win something. Okay. I'm cleaning my brush out for the next part, but I'm gonna wait another minute. So I know how you guys paint, and you're probably still busy, busy, busy doing your background. The other thing I wanna tell you too is when you paint with me, if you have your own colors, once you get to the point where you feel more confident and you wanna do your own color ideas, you go for it. You can, so I just wanna encourage you to start. Oh, you do like it? Yeah, it's pretty. Um, I just want to start breaking you free of, of boundaries when it comes to art and creating and, and painting and stuff like that. And how you don't have to follow rules. We can break rules and you can break my rules too. So just because I show you a certain color combination or certain colors for things do not mean that that's what you have to do. All right, so the next part is going to be the pumpkins. And the bottom ones are the bottom one pumpkin is orange and so I am going to show you why you guys are still doing a little bit more painting I go through a lot of plates when I teach online so you can see me mix a little bit so we're going to talk about orange a little bit <clears throat> okay so orange is red and yellow that's what makes orange so if I take yellow and I take red I'm going to get orange now I did almost the same amount of red as I did yellow. And do you see how red it still is? Okay, so red is very bold. So when you make orange, unless you're wanting a super dark orange, you're not gonna need very much red at all, okay? So, 
it's usually a dot of red into a lot of yellow. Again, that's where if you're mixing it all in your plate, you're going to end up, and I've seen this happen so many times where this is the, the plate that I started with is what's, what everybody gets in my classes and they'll think they're going to make orange and they'll just mix all the red and yellow together. And then they have a super, super dark orange and then they have no paint left. So, do you see how much, very little I even used? So you don't need much at all. But anyways, so there's orange. Now, I want to, I don't know if you can tell this. It's very translucent. And part of it is because of the kind of paint that I use. This is more of the fluid or liquid acrylic. It's not the acrylics that are in the tubes. It's not that you can't use those kind of acrylics, but those acrylics are thick and, and they're okay to use, but they're thick and they're more expensive. And so for me teaching studio classes all the time, I've always bought this is what most art studio, probably everybody uses this kind of paint that I do that you buy it, it's more of a liquid, which makes it dry fast and it's a good quality, but it's also very translucent. So when you put, I'm just dabbing a little white. So if I take white, oh, my paint was dry already. Let's start this, I talked too long. Okay, let's do this again. So I'm gonna take my yellow and just a little bit of red to get my orange. That time I hardly used any. All right, so now I wanna take a little white and I just wanna soften it out. Now, if you use too much white, that's pretty, that was quite a bit. Let's see how buttery yellow it is. Now, if I felt like that was a little bit too much, I'm just gonna put a little bit more red on there, okay? So um, it just covers. So I don't know if you can tell how creamy that is compared to how translucent that is. So the white helps your coverage a little bit better. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to take, so I already have the colors on my brush, but I'll take them again. So I'm gonna take, I'll just take a little bit of white over here because I have white here. My blue's kind of on it, but I'm trying to pull it out from the side. And I'm gonna take yellow I'm gonna take more yellow. So now my brush is pretty well loaded. I probably don't need that much paint on there, not for this. Wipe some of that off. And I'm just gonna take a little corner, a little bitty corner of red right on the corner of my brush, okay? So that's what I have on my brush. It's not really mixed together, it's just there. So I'm just gonna paint the center part of this pumpkin. And I paint in the shape or the direction that the pumpkin is. So it's not like I'm painting across this way or painting just all over. I'm following the shape of it like that. And I don't really do like a full circle and come into the middle, but I come down each side. So I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna take my white, my yellow, and a little bit of red. And that time it was a lot of red, but that's all right. I am all about color. I love color. I love having extra colors. I love pretending I see more colors when I drive and things than what are really there. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, you're going to see that black line a little bit once you paint over it. Don't panic. Just let it be and let it dry because we'll go over it again. Okay, so now I'm going to do all these other four shapes just like that. And I'm just, it's gonna be a surprise what shade of color that it ends up being, but I'm taking white and yellow and red. I'm just putting it in there. And I am painting right up on that black line even though it doesn't cover it very well at this point. Do it again. I have these big old long handled brushes. And I probably don't need it that long. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more red in that one because it's. And that orange is so pretty as a contrast to that turquoise color. 
Isn't that pretty? The two colors there. All right. I'm gonna come to the other side and do over on the other side. Same technique, a little, little white, a little yellow, a little red. I'm gonna come over here. When I first put it on, it was a little bit too red, so I just quickly grabbed some yellow and added to my brush and then painted right over it, and it changed it. No panicking, because we can change and cover up and alter and whatever. So forgiving until you get it in your clothes, and then it's rough. All right, I'm gonna do it again. Whoops, I dipped in that turquoise color, but that's all right. We'll see what happens. Sometimes, for me, I love having the other colors in there, but I wasn't ready for it yet. I paint like Bob Ross. He always grabbed a little of this and a little of that. That's funny, Michelle. You know, it's funny because I never grew up watching him. My dad watercolored when I, I mean, not a lot, but I know he did. He lives with us, by the way, and he's 85, and I can't get him to paint anymore. I wish he would. I mean, it'd be so easy for him because he could just come out in the studio, and I have everything here, and he could just sit down and paint, but he won't, which is sad. But anyways, he used to watercolor. And he also was very particular about what us kids were allowed to watch on TV. And I don't think that there was anything... PBS was definitely a channel we could watch. But we just weren't raised with a lot of TV. But anyways, I wonder if my dad didn't really care for Bob Ross style paintings. And that's why that I never grew up watching them. And I think I... I mean, I've seen them a few times as an adult. But I never grew up watching them. So... It's probably just because my dad didn't care for his style. That sounds like my dad. <laughs> All right, so this should be, it's not really dry completely, but I'm gonna just show you how, like these black lines, how I'm gonna knock them down to where they're not really showing this much. So I'm just taking some more of my mixture here, and I wanna go over it again. Now, if it's not dry, it's not gonna do this, okay? And sometimes, you have to go a little heavier on the white. And you may still see it. But remember, we can go over it again. So remember I said sometimes it takes two or three times maybe to get that to cover up. But if you don't have white in this kind of paint, if you don't have white in with your orange, you will never get it covered up. It's just, it's like transparent paint. So it just kind of, it works as a, a primer. Now, I'm not trying to completely cover my black line, so. Like I said, I like this style. For me, it's just a per personal preference. So I like this style. Ethel, welcome to Heart Club. You just joined. Glad you came to watch. Yeah, I didn't figure everybody would be ready to start painting tonight, but I just wanted to give everybody a little sampling of what it was like. I just keep grabbing my little mixtures of orange here that I mix together and I'm putting just a little extra 
white in it just to kind of knock down that black line just a little bit more because I don't want it too much. But I just like the little bit of it peeking through. All right. So I'm gonna let that pumpkin be done for now. And I'm going to clean out my brush. And the pumpkin in the middle is all the fun greens um, and turquoise colors. And so that's what's gonna be next, which we already did a little bit of that when we did the background. So if you just think of how we did the background, and then you're just gonna do that same kind of colors and maybe a little bit more like when I introduced a little bit of the green up there and it's already on my plate and I showed you how to mix it, but we're gonna do the same kind of colors, only a lot more white to get it lighter and a little bit more on the yellow. So I'm, I already have my white and my blue and I'm gonna just pull my yellow over here. And I want a lot of white because these are kind of like the pumpkins that you get, they're really white, but they don't have, and I'm mixing it way too much. This is where I don't, I'm just trying to get my brush with the different colors. So these are the, like the pumpkins, there's those, I think they're Cinderella pumpkins or the white ones, you know, that are just a lot lighter. So it was the same turquoise, but I did more yellow and I did a lot more white. same turquoise as best as you can get it. Does not have to be perfect, okay? But that foundation. And then I'm going in and I'm gonna get each of these sections, those little, I have these little spaces down here. I'm gonna paint those dark, but I'm not gonna do it yet. Cause those will be like shadows. And you won't even see that. I just should paint it in black to be honest. I picked this painting for you guys tonight. For one, it was pretty simple shapes. And two, is I really wanted you guys to experience the colors that you can make from just the five colors that we started with. And it's just amazing. And it's nice to know that you don't have to buy a lot of stuff too. You don't have to have a ton of paint. Now, you see how the colors are streaked through there? It's because I don't over paint it. I don't paint it too much. I just kind of get my lines on there and then I have so much in my brush. You see that side of the brush has some of yellow and green in it and that side has more blue on it. I didn't do that on purpose. It just ends up that way. So then when I flip my brush over, I just streak it on. But I, if I would keep blending and blending and blending, it would all turn the same color. But I like the the variation and color on that. Thank you, Teresa. Are you from the, did you watch from the beginning to see what colors we started with? We just did this blue and this red and the yellow and we had white and black and we haven't even, well, we used the black at the beginning. So it's amazing what you can do with colors. It's so much fun. blue and the white and the green because there's so much white in this is a little bit easier to cover up your black lines a little bit more. Again, I don't want mine covered completely, but I do cover up. And uh, you know, when I started the black and actually when we do the, this one is the heart club one. This one I painted on a black canvas. I don't buy my canvases black, but I painted it black first. And so we may do it like that in Heart Club because that's what I like is just that. But not all, whoops, I got out of the lines there. I was thinking, forgot what I was doing here. I wanted more color there. Um, don't think all of my Heart Club paintings are all gonna be like this. There's so much variety. We do landscapes and all kinds of stuff. Thank you, Teresa. 
Um, all right. So I like that one. So now I'm going to clean my brush. And the top pumpkin is the pink one. It's Cinderella for sure. But while you guys are probably still working on this one, I will give you, let's wait about, I will try my hardest to wait five whole minutes. Sometimes five whole minutes seems like an eternity when you have paint sitting in front of you and you're not doing anything with it. But while I'm waiting, I'm just taking my little brush and I'm just gonna, if you have these little spaces in here, like I did, I'm just putting black in there just for the shadow between where the pumpkins, it doesn't have it up there. But if you do, I'm just painting those little spaces black. So anyways, well, while you guys are working on that, does anybody else have any other questions? Because I'm just going to sit here for a minute. to think what I could tell you about that would be fun I have enjoyed you guys hanging out in that in the scarecrow challenge group I feel like you guys have become family and it's only been just this week so um, <clears throat> I just I don't know if you heard me on one of my other videos. I was nervous about having a group. I've, I've been part of groups and they're overwhelming and, and, and a lot of time involved in them. And I wasn't sure. I have a hard time just keeping up with my actual Facebook page. Yes, this will be, once this is done, Ethel, this will be the video that you can watch over. And, and for the ones that are in Heart Club, I will, upload this as a YouTube link and you'll get it in an email so you'll be able to do it again so that won't be any problem the, for the rest of the people that aren't going to be in Heart Club it'll be in the Scarecrow Challenge and this Scarecrow Challenge group will be here forever I won't get rid of it but it will it's called archiving it and when I archive it um, I'll probably wait till the end of October I think I don't remember exactly what but anyways once it's archived, you can't comment on it anymore, but you can watch the videos and you can see the pictures and stuff like that. So it will always be available unless you leave the group. But I won't continue to moderate this group as much as I love it. Um, I just want to encourage everybody to come over to my pieces of my art actual page that I do try to be, um, you know, I do lives on there as well from time to time. And I think I'll probably do it more often, especially when I know, um, like I have said before, most of the people on my page before this were just people mostly in the local area that have painted with me over the years. So it's been mostly people locally that, that come and paint with me. And then when I did this challenge, you guys came from all over the country, which is absolutely awesome. So now I feel like I have um, people to give something to that's outside of my studio. So make sure you get onto my actual page. Then you'll know when I do any other kind of painting challenges. You'll also know if you don't decide you want to be part of Heart Club, which is totally fine. Um, maybe later it might be something you want to do or whatever, because I'll be, I'll open up the doors again. But in the meantime, you'll get to have all the fun stuff that I do on my page. So... This little pumpkin. Teresa, were you asking me about erasing stuff? I'm just looking at the videos different because I'm looking across my canvas so the angle of it looks different, but this pumpkin at the top, I feel like that angle, that little, I mean a pumpkin could be like that, but if I want to change it, I'm just going to show you. I feel like I want to cut that little corner off. I feel like it sticks up too high, which I would probably leave it, but I just want to show you that you can change things if you want to. Okay, so see how I cut that off? Now, I'm going to show you. This is why, why you guys are finishing up your 
green pumpkin in the middle, I'm gonna show a little way to fit something. So now I'm just taking white on my big brush. Now, it's gonna take a couple coats. This is just white, so I'm gonna let that dry. And then I'll come back to it. In the meantime, I'm out of white paint, so I'm gonna get more white paint because we're gonna do our little pumpkin, peachy pink pumpkin next. You guys all doing good that's painting? All right, we are, I waited a whole five minutes. Okay, so the pink pumpkin is similar to the orange, but it just has more pink in it. So we're gonna use the same colors. So let me show you. Remember, I showed you how to make the orange. So now we're gonna do the same colors, but we're gonna do more red this time and we're going to do white to make pink so i'm going to just take some white and red simple mixing mix pink this is my granddaughter's color um and then if i put a little yellow in it it makes it just a little bit more of a kind of a flamingo pink so it's just really pretty sorry am i right over top of it so anyways, kind of a ballet pink or flamingo pink. So that's kind of the color we're going to um, start this last pumpkin with. So I'll show you on this one, my messy plate, because this is usually where I paint is on a messy plate. You guys, I threw probably about 20 of these plates away the other day because let me show you really quick this is what happens with me and I hate throwing these away and I don't know what my deal is I'm not really a hoarder got hair stuck to this one though hang on but I have plates like this and I had probably a stack of 20 of them because I'll come out and paint a painting and I'll just grab a plate that I've already the paint's dried on and I'll just reuse it and then I just throw it in a stack and th instead of throwing it away and it's like I kept, keep them all the time. But anyways, so this is my plate. It's like it's mine. All right, so I'm gonna make my pink, put a little yellow in it, because I want it more of a peachy, less orange, okay? And I want a lot more white, because I want it super light. Okay, so I just got that started. And I'm gonna come up, and I'm gonna paint this pumpkin here. And I'm gonna add more white to it as it dries just to get it a little bit lighter. If you guys saw the watercolor video I did today, watercolor is like the opposite. You like start lighter and you go darker. And in acrylic, and I would guess it would be the same for oil, you gotta go, you can, well, you can go either direction, but anyways, you can go from darker to lighter which you can't really do that in watercolor. Now, if somebody actually watercolors and knows really what they're doing, they probably would say that's not true. And that probably is, I don't know. Like I said, I'm just, I just do what I experience, I guess. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit more. Sometimes you can let more yellow show. This one's like sunshine. So I still, I keep picking up colors maybe just like in my white and they're not gonna be quite the exact same. But I can like lay 
and we'll do more of this here in a minute, but so you can see different shades. Let me still. going to just grab a clean brush and start cleaning it. I'm going to go another coat over this right here. And I think after this coat, then I can add my blue back in it. Okay, once you get all of your pumpkins, we got our colors, got our orange pumpkin, our green one, and then the peach pink one. Once you get that done, we are going to, um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trade in our big brush for our smaller brush. And we're just gonna add some color to it to make it a little bit more on the abstract part side of it. Okay, so if you don't want to do that, you're fine if you have your certain idea of how you like your painting to be and if you like clean and crisp and you know, just um, minimalistic or whatever. Make it be that, okay? So there's nothing wrong with having it that way, but I'm gonna go on and show you, but I'm gonna get, let me get this little spot up here. I can get some color here. To cover that. So that blue is just a little bit different than the blue in other areas. And so, so it doesn't just look like I just fixed that and where it's like, that's the only place it's like that. What I'll do is I'll take my brush and I got pink in it still from that pumpkin, but I'll come in some other places maybe and put it around. So that way it's just not there. But anyways, so that's how you can fix that without doing a pencil and an eraser. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a couple more minutes and then we're gonna go to the little brush. And I'm gonna just show you how to kind of make this abstract a little bit without overdoing it, because that's easy to overdo. Are you guys having fun? <clears throat> the ones that you painting, and then I know there's some of you guys watching, so hope you guys are enjoying watching too. This is our hangout for Wednesday nights in heart clubs. Yes, I use, let me show you really quick. Those are beautiful, thank you. Um, Teresa Whitaker. This is the brand of acrylics that I use for this. It's Blit Acrylic. Now this is a half gallon because I teach classes in my studio and this is how I buy it. And I fill up and then I buy these mustard ketchup bottles at Walmart. Usually it's just in the spring. If it's not in the spring, sometimes I'll have them in clearance. But this is the brand that I use and I only use the white and the black and then I have the yellow, which is mixed up over here, chrome yellow, bright red, phthalo blue, and then black and white. Good, Sammy, I'm glad you guys are having fun. You guys always have so much fun. So yeah, so all the, so everything you see on this canvas is just made from those colors. It's my economy style painting. It definitely saves a lot of money in paint. And you can buy the, you can buy those colors in quart sizes and they have a six pack. You get another blue too that's ultramarine blue and I don't ever use it. I used to at first, but just the consistency of it is really weird and it's really thin. It's a brighter blue and it's like if you don't put water or white with it, it won't even show up. And so, but anyways, you can buy a six pack of those colors from the art company that I get it from and I want to say it's about $35 for all those and those would last as an individual you would probably 
depends on how often you paint for sure, but if you painted weekly, they would last you at least six months. I don't know, Sammy and Shelly and Melissa, Mary, you guys that are on here, you guys bought those at the beginning. How much do you have? Oh, yes, it did come with magenta. I remember that. I think, I remember, because I used to get magenta. It's a little bit more on the pink side, and I had always used yellow with it to make it brighter. And then I think one time they accidentally um, sent me bright red instead of magenta when I was buying the half gallons. And I liked it better, so I just continued to use the bright red. But yes, it is magenta. How long have you had? You, Mary, you got yours back in May. So when I first started Heart Club, it was May, the beginning of May. How much do you guys have left of those? Because that's, see, May, June, July, August, September. It's been five months. So I'm guessing you probably still have plenty. And it's, it's just so much cheaper than buying those tubes of paint. I mean, I like those and I use them and I use them at different, still full, see? And you paint with me all the time, Mary. You do it weekly pretty much. So yeah, so they'll last you, I would say probably a year. Now the only thing I would say if you didn't use it, if you didn't paint and you had it for a year or longer, after a while, some of them will get kind of mildewy. And I've had that happen over time when I first started buying the big ones because I didn't have as many classes. Now they never get old because I go through them. All right. So you bought the six pack and you have a... F oh, you've been sharing. That's awesome. So yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, so it's probably, it's my favorite paint to teach. It's great for teaching. It's great for learning. So when you, once you guys get your wings and you spread them and you guys are ready to start making art and selling it or teaching or whatever it is you want to do with it or give it as gifts and you want to go up a notch, then, you know, hopefully I introduced you to, to it and freed you up from being afraid of things and you guys go sore buy the paints because I didn't know much about paint so you have at least half of each color see yeah so that's a good good quality paint for a good price all right um okay so now let's go let's before we do let's start with sorry thinking out loud here I need a little bit more white so we're gonna start with a lighter yellow first Okay, so I have my little brush. So we're just gonna add, because I feel like yellow's in all of them, so we can do that. So I'm gonna just take a little of my yellow and my white and soften it out. Now if you wanted a little bit more of a softer yellow or warmer yellow, you could just get a little bit of red. So I have a little red on my brush. Just a little bit of red in that. And it just makes it a little bit softer, kind of a buttery yellow. All right, so I just have my brush. And I'm gonna start at the top because I don't wanna bring my arm down through it. And I'm just gonna add, you see how I just brushed it on right there? Just add some yellow in some of these. I don't wanna overdo it, okay? And I don't have to do it everywhere either. I don't have to do it. If I do it here, it doesn't mean I gotta do it there, 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 there. You know, don't think everything has to be even. Sometimes it's hard to think everything has to be symmetrical. Sometimes that's an OCD brain, I guess. I do not have. All right, I'm making, sorry. I made some more peach. I do not have an OCD. I have like a squirrel brain or whatever. I can be on one thing and then, so I'm just, I felt like it needed to cover up the black a little bit more, so I was making some more. Sorry. Go back to ye yellow. That was a big distraction there. Okay, so more yellow. So now I'm going to come down and I want to add some in this one here. Some might be a little whiter. Whiter, not whiter, whiter areas really pretty on that blue on that green color oh I had some other color in there 
but I'm following the shape of the pumpkin when I do it, okay? Now I'm gonna come down to the last one. Make a little bit more here. So I'm coming down here. So now I'm gonna add, this one may need a little bit more color in it, just because you're on the orange already, and it'll look white if you don't have, there we go. So I'm just picking some different places, not trying to be the same spot in each section. So I didn't do too much. Okay, so that was yellow. Just that soft, buttery yellow. Now, let's do, we'll do some pink like we did in that top pumpkin. So I wanna make, so from that, so I already got that soft, buttery yellow, so I can just pull some red over there to that. I want the peachy pink, not the pink pink, but you, whatever pink you want. Okay, so it's just a kind of a peachy pink. And then I'm gonna pick some places on this, and look, there's a little bolder red in it, because it didn't. I didn't mix it all the way, and that's good, because then you have some darker stuff too. got like that was like almost look like a hair on top of that that yellow hair so I'm gonna break that up with the pink a little bit okay so I want to take that peachy pink now and I want to come down and I just want to do a little bit just a little bit on my green pumpkin not too much Maybe go down in the middle just a little bit too. Don't forget the middle. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do on that one. And then I wanna come down and do a little peachy pink down here, which remember that orange sometimes it maybe need, let's go darker. I'm gonna go darker for that one. Go a darker pink, pinkish red. There we go. Kind of a hot pink. Now I might want to do a little bit of that darker, just a little bit. I want to add a couple places on that. Maybe a little bit of the darker up here, especially this, if it's darker, it goes well at the bottom, like where the shadow would be. I'm just kind of adding some darker pink. It's that really flamingo pink for sure. Um, and then I'm gonna go back and do my turquoise or my aqua blue, so kind of this background color. So do you remember how we did it? We did a little bit of yellow and more blue. And I did enough blue to pull the green out of it, so it was more of a blue green. Okay, now I don't want to just mix all of that. It's still a little greener than I want, but that's okay. So anyways, I wipe some of that off and then I can come in my white. So now I have some, so I lighten it up with my white. And this I don't want it, I don't really want too much. But just some places. Doing a little bit more on this metal pumpkin because that's kind of the colors that's in it. 
so it was okay to go a little heavier. I don't want to just pull too much into the other ones though, but just a little bit. And I might kind of stay more maybe on the, like the, the little ridges. So it kind of is creating a little bit of a, the fill of a shadow. So not so much in the middle. The difference with this painting and then the one that I did in the video, and I still want to add a little bit to the stem up here, but um, the difference between this one and the one in the video that I, sorry, that I showed you was, and I used my tube paints for that, um, the thicker acrylics. And my granddaughter, who's five, she was four at Christmas, um, they used to live close to us and her and her brother would come twice or two days a week. They'd stay the night for two nights and stay with us. And um, she, she, uh, she hung out with me in the studio. She painted with me. She was so much fun. And then they moved to Florida, so now they're a long ways away. Although we've got, we get to see them still. They came a couple weeks ago and they're in Colorado. But anyways, for Christmas, she bought me a tube of fluorescent pink paint because pink is her color. Her mama was not um, a pink person and she was like, I'm not gonna let my daughter be stereotyped to just be pink everything just cause she's a little girl. And so she was like, nothing she had was pink. Well now Caitlin's pink everything. So she bought me this fluorescent pink. And I'm gonna show you the painting that I did up close because it has Caitlin's pink in it. And that's what I named it. So this one, so I want you to, I wanted you guys to see the difference. Okay, can you see these? All right, so this is obviously a longer painting. So this was the thicker paint. So you can, I don't know if you can see the texture. Okay, so this was tubes of paint that were the actual colors. I didn't mix my colors for this one, but I mixed it for this one. So this one was created with red, yellow, and blue, and black and white. This one was created with the actual colors that you see. Do you see how close you can copy, you can mix your colors to match the things that you buy. But anyways, Caitlin's pink. I have to put it in my paintings now. Do you see that fluorescent pink in there? There's some down here. There's a little there, little there, see a little, so those are little fluorescent pink for Caitlin's pink. So it's hard, you can't really make fluorescent pink with these colors, that's something you can't do. All right, couple last things here. So I'm just going to take some white, which isn't pure white, but it's pretty close to white. Maybe, the color's underneath it, maybe it isn't. If you have a little white left, you can put, it looks white. You can add a couple places of white just to give a little bit of a highlight. I'm gonna to have to get some because I wasn't. All right, I'm not doing it heavy, but I just want some paint, some little lights. It's like you're just painting a little light on them, some different places just to give brightness up. This is definitely a cheerful, um fall pumpkin painting it's not not the typical colors for sure for fall but it's fun it's just fun okay so up here on this stem let's think about what we want to do okay stems would be in our mind brown or green but we don't want to just be what's in our mind so i'm going to just dip in a little blue and red blue and red make purple so i just dipped in that um, let's get a little lighter in there. So I'm just grabbing stuff off my plate. Maybe I want a little yellow. Maybe I want a little green. This is where you can just do whatever. And you know what, if it turns out you don't like the colors, you can just paint over it. Okay, um, is there anything else? I don't think so. You could do, if you wanted to do, 
me see. Let me look at this one more. No, nope, I didn't do that. I was thinking, well, maybe I did. If you wanted any, let's try one other. You can see what you think with mine. I'll be the guinea pig. I don't have any purple in there. How about some purple? So I'm going to do a darker purple. So I did red and blue, which is a color we haven't mixed yet. And so if you don't put white in, it's super dark. So I'm going to just put a little white in it. It's kind of a great purple now. Now if you did more red, it'd be more of a red violet. The more blue is the more of a blue violet. All right, that's a color we didn't use. So I'm just going to add, and you know it's funny because sometimes it'll look different on places, depends on where you put it, on what colors. It picks up different shades of color. I'm kind of putting it along the bottom, like where my black would be. So it softens the black out, gives a little bit more of a shadow underneath it. Well, there's a big old blob of purple on that pumpkin, but that's okay. It would be Caitlin approved, that's for sure. So I'm kind of doing some of it like where the black lines would be. All right, that was fun. What do you guys think? All right, I'm gonna say mine's done. Um, Jamie, um, I wish I could say yes. I wish I could really like give you guidelines on that, but I just, I don't, I just, I go with what feels and looks right to me. And trust me, there's times when I've done abstract and it's like, it's a hot mess because I did way too much. So sometimes it's just very um, trial and error. And then if you don't like something, what's cool, like, I mean, like right there, that purple, that could almost be too much, but you know what? I kind of like it because it's just one place. But see, that's the thing is I think with abstract, the hard thing is like your mind wants to make everything the same or symmetrical or whatever. And so abstract is more random, but also you got to repeat the colors too. So I use this purple. I got that pretty heavy place there. But then when you come down here to the bottom, I have a place over here on this side. So it kind of balances it out. Um, and so anyway, so I don't, I mean, that's the best way I can explain it. Like I said, you guys, I am totally self-taught. I've never been to school for art. The, my, well, I take that back. Junior high was my last formal art. I loved art in junior high back in the day when it's seventh through ninth grade. And you could take two art classes and still take music and still be able to do all those things. And now you can't even take art. It has to, you have to be, pick between art or music. But I absolutely loved art from the time I was a little bitty. And then I went to a private school in 10th grade and I had an art teacher and she quit after a year. And that was it. That was, I was, that was the end of my art. Never went to college. I just loved art, but I didn't start painting um, probably till I was close to being 40 years old, um, which I probably didn't tell you how much because you don't know how old I am, but it's been a long time. But anyways, I, um, a good, you know, 20 years of being married, it was towards the end of that when I started painting and I did it as therapy because it was like the one day, actually, I know exactly when I started painting, it was on Mother's Day, a couple years in a row because I was in a very rocky um, marriage at the time and I had six kids, nothing wrong with the kids at all, but I just wanted to do something for me on Mother's Day and I would just go out and on the back deck and I would get paints out and I was like, this is what I want for Mother's Day and I'd sit out and paint. And that's kind of what started it. And then when I got divorced, um, I worked as a paraprofessional at a school. I had no college education. And I would take this one little boy to art class and all of a sudden it's like, I would smell the art room. It's like, this is what I wanna do. I wanna be an art teacher. Um, it just brought back the memories, the smell, the crayons and the temper paints and stuff. And it was just like, okay, this is what I was gonna, what I wanna do. And I was 41 years old and I'd never been to college. Um, and so I 
took a started taking a college class at a local um, junior college. And because I was so busy, I was working, I had six kids, I was divorced. It was like, I couldn't hardly have time. And I could have probably got free classes if I would have taken more, but I didn't have time for it. So I just took one class, I took English. I passed it, I liked writing, but it was like after a semester that, I was like, there's no way. There's no way I can get through college and become a teacher. I'm not gonna spend the next 10 years of my life going to school and start a teaching career in my 50s. And so I just, started eventually took a couple of years i got remarried and then um and we have a son together and and it just life has been wonderful i mean not always easy but but it's just been i have found where i belong i've found what i need to be doing and it's been in teaching other people how to do art and i started out just teaching kids so i could be home with my son and taught kids art and i just taught what i love to do and what i wanted to do and I've, I mean, I hit that in 2011, and I've been doing it ever since, and I love everything about it. So all that to say is, I don't know what I'm doing other than I just do things that I love, and I like to help other people do things, and you know, even if it's just an introduction to get you started, and then you guys find what you love to do, and you take off with it. So anyways, that's at my story in a nutshell. And I am finished with my painting. I just want to tell you guys, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I have, I have eight children. Yes. I have six from my first marriage and my husband has one and we have one together. So he married me with six kids and it's quite the story, but, um, and we've been married 13 years and we have a 12 year old and so, and we have four grandkids. Our newest one is a month old, and she's the sweetest. All of our grandkids we love. We have three granddaughters and one grandson. And so we are so blessed. Um, there's so many times my husband tells me he wishes that we had all the kids. He wished he raised my kids. And, and, and we have good relationships with all of them. It's really neat. God's blessed us for sure. We live out in the country now. We've been out here for four years, and he all the time we were like, man, I wish the kids could have grown up here. All of my kids could have grown up here because it's so beautiful, so much fun out here. So, But they come around, and uh, they're still kids. They always will be. So, Michelle, you have five. Yes, that's awesome. Children are a blessing. They're a blessing, and then they teach us a whole lot when they're teenagers. And I, after Caden goes through his teenage years, I never want to raise another teenager again. They That will exhaust you. So anyways, good thing they come out sweet babies because that's when you get hooked on them. Three grandsons and two grandsons on the way. Awesome. That's a lot of boys. See, I thought I had a lot of boys because of my eight kids. That's six boys and two girls. And so we're averaging it back out with the granddaughters, which is nice. So anyways, all right. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to get off. This was so much fun tonight hanging out with you guys. My heart clubbers, I will see you. Watch your emails. Um, if you have any questions, always email me. And next Wednesday, we will be in there in the heart club group. And we will paint in there next Wednesday. And thank you for coming over here and painting with us over here. And be sure to share your paintings. And you can share it right here in the Scarecrow Challenge. Um, oh, you have three girls. That's funny. It's how it, how it changes. Yay. Oh, granddaughters are so sweet. I tell you what. Two kids and one amazing granddaughter. Yes. I know. I miss Caitlin. You guys would love her. She's in some of my videos if you ever go back on my page. She's the sweetest. So I can't wait for little Lennon as our one month old. Sammy, thank you. Arabella, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So anybody else that was watching, that if you guys want to know more about Heart Club, um, you can message me or whatever or check your emails. I know I've been sending those out. They just come out a lot this week. After this week, I won't be like that. But I just want to make sure nobody misses the opportunity to be part of this. It's um, $27 a month. You can cancel anytime. Yours is Kaylee. Yeah, Kaylee and Caitlin. That's awesome. So, yes, Heart Club, you guys, you're not locked in for life. You can try it one month. And if you like it, you can keep coming. If not, you can cancel. It's not a problem whatsoever. 
$27 is the price it is going to be. Um, I will close the doors tomorrow at midnight, October 1st, and it won't be open again until after the first of the year. Um, three sons, three bonus sons, five daughter-in-laws. Oh my gosh, one grandson and three, a three-day-old granddaughter. Life's crazy. Oh yes. Oh, those newborns. Man, it's like I want to see my granddaughter. They're about 45 minutes away. Did you love doing the pumpkins? Thank you. Thank you, Ethel. Good night. So yes, the newborns are so much fun and they grew up so fast. So anyways, but all right, there's my spill on Heart Club thing. Thank you for coming and painting. I know so many different colors. I was surprised when I showed you that other because I couldn't see it very well from where I was setting. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to be able to make the bright colors. Let me show you again. I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to make those colors. But yeah, it's amazing what you can mix with just a few colors. So, all right. I'm going to sign off and I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Elaine, thank you. You're welcome. Yvonne, good. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Yes, um, I will give you plenty of things that you can do as Christmas. So the rest of this month, Michelle, um, we're going to do this, that coffee or teacup or whatever, your favorite beverage is next, not next week. Next week we'll do kind of an introduction. And then, then we'll do that one. And then there's a Halloween painting I have. I can't think what I have for this month. We do three a month. So... You actually get a bonus one with this one. But anyways, and then once we hit November, we'll start doing Christmas stuff. And so that way, um, yeah, you'll have plenty. Yes, for sure, Sammy. So we'll have plenty of fun Christmas ones you can do. And of course, you know, once you paint one, then you can turn around and paint, you know, more of them. So all, there's so many Christmas paintings every year in the studio. I never have enough weeks to do all the Christmas ones. So I'm excited to do Christmas with you guys. And I will teach you a little bit of lettering. We'll, you know, we'll have some things that involve lettering and and maybe just touch on Thanksgiving a little bit as well. Um, actually, I was thinking about this one. I was writing things to be thankful for. So if you want another idea, I'm just going to write one thing. And then if you want to do this, you can on your own. So like I have my Faber-Castell pen whatever so you could write things if you wanted to you don't have to but we could write all the things you're thankful for all over your pumpkin i wrote my family you know you could just think of all the things and it could be total thankful so you could just follow along and just add your own things that you think i forgot all about that till you said that it is always a 12 by 16 is what i teach from ethel it just is the size that i've done in my studio Sometimes I feel like it's too big that maybe I should drop down to 11 by 14. But um, if you want to get a smaller size, I don't think it would be a problem. Because you can't really tell what size mine is. It's just what you prefer. I wouldn't go any bigger than a 12 by 16. Now the one we're going to do, I don't know if you're on here yet. This is one we're going to do. This is a 12 by 12. And I know we maybe don't have, this could be done on a 12 by 16 too. So anyways. It's just up to you what you want. The 12 by 16 is what I have most of the time. So, anyways, Louise, thank you for hanging out. So, if you guys do this later and not now, be sure and share it in the group. Show everybody what you like or what you're painting. So, all right, ladies. I can say ladies. I think it's mostly... There might have been a couple men, but I don't know if they were men or not. It might have been women that were using men's account, their husband's accounts to get in. So I don't know. I'm assuming it's all ladies, but I don't want to offend anybody if there's men in here too. I didn't exclude men. But all right. If you have more questions, you know where to find me. But I'm going to go in and hang out with my hubby and my son for a little bit and head to bed soon. So tomorrow today's wednesday yep tomorrow's last day for heart club all right ladies i will talk to you later thank you so much for coming and painting tonight